Hi, George here, and I received this comment about one of my other projects, and looking at the question, it seems to me that the answer is in how the clipping mask is being used. So I thought I'd do a video here just going over the basics of clipping masks and showing how useful they are when working on projects inside of Photoshop Elements. Now the basic concept of a clipping mask is that it takes the contents of one layer and puts it into the contents of another layer. I can demonstrate that here with this project. Let's just duplicate this layer. There we go. So I have two layers in here. we will go to our top layer and let's go up to layer, come down to adjustment layer. And we'll do something simple in here. We'll just do a levels adjustment. And we have this option right here. Use previous layer to create clipping mask. Let's do this without using this. So I'll choose OK. Here's our levels control. And notice how these are all lined up over here. The adjustment layer is on top and the two images down below. If I make some adjustments in here, let's just make this a lot brighter like that and a bit more contrasty. There we go. I can then hide this. And then notice if I hide this layer up here and I'm just in the background layer, we have the same adjustment on both layers. So that's with having that control unchecked. I'll just delete this one. Do the exact same thing. Layer, adjustment layer, and levels. Here we go. This time I'll check this checkbox. Check right there. Choose OK. And same thing, I'll just bring in some more black. I'll bring the midtones up. I'll bring up the whites and just make it more contrasty. There we go. This time, notice how this layer is indented and it has a little arrow here pointing to the layer underneath. That means that this layer adjustment is now clipped to this one layer. If I hide this layer, notice how the adjustment is not on the layer underneath. Right there. So that's the benefit of using a clipping mask is that it clips whatever this layer is into the layer underneath. And you can do a lot more with that, not just these adjustment layers, although this is how I normally use this, but you can have some more fun with this. First off, on this layer, right click over where the name is, and notice that we have an option right here, release clipping mask. If I click on that, notice that that goes away. This is now working on both of those layers. If I want it clipped to just one layer, same thing, right click and then Create Clipping Mask, and it now is just working on just this one layer, just like that. So that's using adjustment layers and clipping masks. Let's see something else that you can do with this. This is a lot of fun. Now again, remember that I said that a clipping mask takes the contents of one layer and puts it into another layer. We can show that here. I'm just going to convert this layer to a regular layer, double click on the name, convert this to layer zero. It's no longer a background layer. I'll make a new layer here. Let's go over and grab our type tool. I'll set my type color here at black. And we'll just find a real thick typeface. Here's one, Gil Sands Ultra Bold Regular, real thick. And I'll just type in city right down there. That's okay, I'll grab that and bring it up here. Control T to bring up our transform handles. Let's just make some adjustments on this, make it a lot larger like that. Notice that it's still text. I can still come in here, double click, and then change what this is if I wanted to. In this case, I don't. But I'm gonna put this right here. Now notice that it's on top, I can't do much with this, but if I take this layer here and I put the text layer underneath my image layer, I can now take the image layer and put it inside of the contents of the text layer. In other words, I can put this image inside of the text just by making this into a clipping mask. So let's right click in here, create clipping mask. It takes this layer and puts it inside the contents of this layer. In this case, this is our text layer right in here. Now, a fun thing about this is because this is a layer that's just clipped inside, I can actually come in here and move my image around like this and get it just exactly where I want it. Let me bring in some of those lightning bolts in here. That's kind of fun. There we go. So it gives you some real freedom in here when you're doing this kind of image inside of text. This also works if you're working with shapes. Let's just hide this. I'm going to release this clipping mask. There we go. Put that back so it's centered. Let's now create a shape. Maybe I wanted to have this inside of an oval. So I'll go over here, let's grab our shape tools and I'll grab the ellipse shape tool. Let's just drag this down like that so it's kind of a nice large shape. And I'll bring this in here someplace. Let's do a control T again for our control handles and I'll make this a bit larger. And spread the sides out like that. There's a big elliptical shape in here. And if I want to have the image inside of this shape, same thing, exactly the same as working with the text. Just take our shape layer, put it underneath the picture, go up to the picture layer, right click on the picture layer, and then create clipping mask. And it puts the picture inside of that shape. And you can have more fun with this even than just this much because we can do things onto this shape. 
It's on our shape layer down here. For instance, let's go up here to layer, come down to layer style and style settings. Let's put a drop shadow on this. Let's bring my distance out. Let's bring our shadow angle over here. We get much more opaque so you can see that. There we go. And adjust the size a little bit. So here's a drop shadow. Maybe you don't want to have all this checkerboard stuff in the back. That's transparency. If I want to have a solid background, let's come down here and make a new layer down here. Let's change our foreground to white. Grab our paint bucket and just fill that. There it is. So here's a drop shadow. We can also apply bevels onto this. Let's go back over here. Just double click where it says FX. Raise our layer styles back up again. And let's put a bevel on this. And here's a nice soft bevel. Maybe you want a hard bevel instead of a soft bevel. You can do that as well. Let's come down here to styles and set this at bevels. And right here is a nice standard simple sharp bevel. Just double click on that. That's on there. It's kind of hard to see, but it's there. Let's go back to our layers, back to our effects. Notice that bevel is now showing again. I can bring my Size up, and there's a hard edge bevel. That's how you get the hard edge bevels here inside of Photoshop Elements. You can go from the Styles section. So here's a nice hard edge bevel. I mean, we can go real fancy on this, doing all kinds of neat stuff if I wanted to. But you get the idea. And the main thing here is that we have this image applied to the shape. And if I come in, I want to maybe change the values in here. I'll go up here to this Image Layer. Let's go up to Layer, come down to New Adjustment Layer, and Levels, just like we did before. Make sure you check Use Previous Layer, choose OK. This is now linked together. And if I do my adjustments in here, it's going to work on that image. And the image is still staying inside of that elliptical shape. So lots of fun you can have here with these clipping masks. And the most important part is just to remember that the clipping mask, what it does is it takes the contents of this layer and puts it inside of the contents of this layer. In this case, inside of this elliptical shape or the text. And over here, it put the adjustment inside of this layer and not inside of that layer. If you found this useful and you want to find out a lot more about these little tricks and tips for Photoshop Elements, I have a great product for that. It's called my HTG Photo Coach, and it's like a super help system, much, much better than the Photoshop Elements help system. And I go through the whole program and I have step-by-step -step instructions for everything inside of Photoshop Elements and a lot more as well. I'll put a link for that at the top of the description. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up and give me a like. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you next time.